All right, again, my name is Ty Nguyen. I'm with Hensel Phelps Construction. Um, thank you again for the opportunity to present today. I, I think they were originally going to give me 20 minutes, but I think we're running a little long, so I'll try to make it 10 to 15. Um, just to summarize real quick, I think all these technologies that we've seen today are great, um, you know, from the one-off apps to the integrated solutions. Uh, but I think I want to stress, I think I'll sum up the first five slides that I, I typically go through. But with any technology, you got to have a plan, right? And it sums, uh, actually, this uh, VDC plan of work is what Hensel Phelps tries to instill in every project, where literally we look at every phase of the project. We look at the people, the process, and lastly, the technology. I think too often we go and chase technology, and we unnaturally try to fit it into what we try to do, causing additional um, layers and difficulties with every job. So again, with every technology and going forward, we always try to have a plan for what we do. Uh, with Hensel Phelps, this VDC plan of work is six steps. Uh, again, we start with the people process and then lastly the technology. So I'll just run through it real quick. Um, again, just a roadmap to where this needs to go. So uh, this slide really kind of summarizes every job that I um, get to touch and work on. Really, it's just touching so many different tools, right? In this uh, slide here, it shows from the design side to the owner turnover, uh, you start with so many different types of authoring tools. Uh, with that, at the end of the day, every owner has their own specific systems, right? So we are tasked to manage all this data. How do we manage this data, right? So you know, we collect it, we need easy solutions. Like uh, I saw a bunch of easy solutions today, which is great. Uh, at Hensel Phelps, our guys like that one button, that easy button, um, but we'll settle for three, right? So that's just the reality. So as we're Developing this plan, we're also looking at, you know, natively what each team needs, and then when, with that, what each team is bringing within their toolbox, right? So I think the key, and Rob mentioned it earlier, is integration. We've got to have solutions out there that integrate. I think we have tons of great single solutions, but if these single solutions are going to cause an additional layer of complication at the end of the job, then it's, you know, it makes things difficult. So again, that ability to integrate is very important as we're moving forward. And then a very simple thing, I think, with every job is you've got to have standards, right? So again, this integration, if you don't have standards across the board down to even a simple naming convention, again, this can really um, cause havoc on the jobs. And here's this, uh, you know, at Senso Phelps, when we first started, it was very similar when we started with these one-off apps, uh, tons of great apps. And then we started to try to get into a single sign-on solution where we wanted to keep everything in a single database, right? So the concept is you can keep all your 2D data within your 3D database, so you're not having to sign off one solution and jump to another solution. So we have implemented this on a handful of jobs out there. And um, this uh, technology we use actually leverages on the AWS service. Uh, for this particular effort, we picked a, uh, um, a data center in Ireland, actually, to, to house this information. This is a project that actually we work with Rosedin on. Uh, this was uh, in Arizona where literally it was uh, unbelievable when we first got into this job and quickly realized how much scan content we had to create. I think in the two years we scanned 240,000 scans, close to 16 terabytes within two years. And with that, having to figure out how we process this information to get it to the trades like Rosendon to uh, use for their design content because our existing conditions were um, not very good as far as the uh, 2D as builds. So this uh, video kind of shows what we went through. Um, we had three shifts. We scanned uh, two shifts uh, twice a day and then the third shift would be an overnight shift that actually would register and process these scans and then that next morning for that design kickoff we would give it to the trades like the Rosedins to take it for their design. We didn't have the time to model, so really we had to learn how to use the native scans. And uh, every trade down there, including Rosedin, did a great job of learning how to use the scans to uh, create their design content. So coming out of this job, we also realized because of all these scans, you know, we needed a better process in place. So we're looking at technologies where literally from one scan to the next, we can do change detection where these colors here, they'll show you, um, you know, in yellow here is a, uh, shows that there's new content where uh, purple is maybe content that's been removed. So that was very important for us coming out of this job to get better technologies to manage this uh, scan content. And Rob mentioned earlier, um, you know, 
documenting post tension before you pour, right? Uh, we're doing this now coming out of this, uh, once we've learned to leverage on this technology, we're using laser scanning to uh, validate our form work. Uh, prior to the pour, we're scanning the, uh, all the post tension, right? So after you pour, now you've got within three millimeters accuracy of where those post tension cables are, right? So great way to use technology again to document for future issues. There's a post tension right there in the red. And beyond um, validating formwork post tension, laser scanning technology can also be used for coordination, right? So here logistically, we knew that we would have to prefab these offsite, right? So getting these um, pre prefab uh, um, uh, sections to this job site, we literally would scan the entire section of, of uh, a highway or roadway to make sure that this would actually fit going down the highway. Once it gets on site, then we can use um, integration with the BIM model to start to see if it actually this span is going to fit the way it should fit within the, the construction tolerance. So another great application of this technology. And then as we got more ideas coming from the field, because honestly most of these ideas that uh, are, are uh, I'm tasked to kind of try to deliver are coming from the guys in the field, right? So as the superintendents are starting to see this technology and how they can use it and they're not scared of it anymore, um, they want to use it for everything, right? So this was a neat idea where, um, you know, we talked uh, one of our owners into um, agreeing with us to kind of try to pilot this program where we're scanning all the in-wall prior to closing up with drywall, right? So now as an owner, at the end of the day, you know, we can give him this data where literally with an iPad, he can go up to that wall, scan that wall, and he has a complete in-wall scan without having to touch that wall, right? Huge value, but what we're finding out is it was very labor intensive, right? To set up a scanner, scan that section of uh, in-wall, and then move to that next room, especially in a facility with like 400 rooms, right? How long that would take. So new technologies are coming out where we're starting to experiment with mobile scanners, right? So in this video, I'll show you quickly. It is now a scanner that does not require setup, right? So if you have control in place on the ground, um, you can use this mobile scanner and walking speeds, you can start to capture the in-wall scans without having to set up a tripod and scanning. Now the accuracy is not as good as a traditional scanner, but I think within 10 millimeters, um, you know, it does pretty well for in-wall. So I'll forward this video a little bit. And this is a true LiDAR scanner actually. Oh, is it playing? Okay, well, if this fig figures itself out, I'll go back to it. But again, it's just a mo mobile um, cart that literally you would push at walking speeds. It registers off the site control and it starts to capture all this information. So here's an example of a post-production um, uh, set of data where literally everything you see there is from that mobile scanner. It can capture approximately 25 rooms per hour. So very efficient instead of having you know, three um, engineers set up, the, set up the scanner, set up the spheres and scan. Literally, you can have one guy pushing the scan, you know, from room to room, level to level, and uh, get all these in-wall scans within a day. And here's a fun one we got to do. So, you know, besides capturing um, post-tension and forms, it's a a great technology that allows you to also document, you know, existing conditions as far as preserving historical sites here. We got to scan a facility actually in Ireland. Uh, it was an old uh, school that we were able to go and scan. It took us, I think, two days to scan this. But if you can see just the, the detail that you can get through these, uh, this type of technology. And then from that, you can literally take these scans with time permitting. Uh, we had a model actually created from those scans. And this was created in Revit. This is a slide that kind of shows how we typically deliver. Um, you guys have all been through this where a lot of times it starts in 3D and it goes to 2D and then really at the end of the day it goes in these boxes and it goes to be um, in someone's connects, in someone's office, right? And half the time they can't find that information, right? So I think um, as we start to collect this data, and there's better tools out there to start collecting this data and helping us manage this data, um, now we're starting to understand how we need to push this data, right? What's valuable for the owner at the end of the day? 
And here's a video where we're leveraging on this data, right? And there's many tools out there that does this, but uh, this one specifically will allow us, and you know, in this example, we don't even have a model, right? So the concept, the workflow would be, we would go into an existing condition facility, scan it, and then be able to associate metadata to that scan itself without e uh, um, an elements uh, needing to be modeled. And with that, within the, you know, the interfaces, you can use a tablet to access this, a, um, an Apple device, uh, a, a laptop, right? So again, all this information that we would typically deliver um, in the uh, O process, now we can deliver digitally, right? And as an owner, um, it's much more effective, right? He, again, can access this information very readily and quickly. He, can, he knows when his equipment's, um, if it's under warranty, if it's not, then he can replace it, right? So saving the owner a lot of money at the end of the day. So the evolution of not only collecting now and then allowing access and easy access to data is putting logic behind the data, right? So in this example, um, typical work ticket, right? So the building engineer will get a work ticket saying there's a piece of equipment that has gone wrong or it, it's, uh, there's something wrong with it. He can quickly access the database to figure out where that piece of equipment is, right? Or else if he's in the field, he can scan that piece of equipment and he'll get to the same area where Literally everything throughout the life cycle of from pre-construction through construction to turnover that's been collected and linked to this piece of equipment will come up. With that, he's able to start troubleshooting to see what's wrong with this piece of equipment. So here, once he isolates it, he's able to go and access this information. And then the logic that I was referring to now allowing him to access information, the next step is then to show him everything upstream and downstream, right? So again, by picking this piece of equipment, he knows everything downstream from this piece of equipment and he knows everything upstream. Very valuable, right? So instead of having to go and look at manuals, he knows where the connections are, um, there's any critical areas through this piece of equipment. All the information associated with that piece of equipment. As most PDFs go, especially the specifications, there's hundreds of pages of information, right? So it's very good to have a searchable PDF where literally if, you know, one of the things that he's gonna search to find out uh, is the discharge temperature. So instead of scrolling through the PDF and trying to find where that discharge temperature is, he can go ahead and type in discharge temperature. and it will find it within that 100 page PDF and it tell them the range is anywhere from 55 to 70 degrees. So another module to the system is the ability to piggyback on BACnet systems, right? So now that he knows that temperature, he can then go and see the readings on that piece of equipment using the pulse module within this um, uh, suite of uh, solutions. Historically, he can then go look at the range of dates that he needs and it's telling him that the discharge temperature has been anywhere between 50 to, to 60 degrees, right? So it's within range. So again, I think, you know, not the best example of facilities management, but it tells you the concept of what you can access once you collect this data. So not all data has to be accessed 3D, right? So here's another concept where um, a lot of customers or a lot of owners prefer the 2D platform, right? So um, in this interface, what we're showing is the ability uh, here's for a large um, airport project that we have where the owner just created these zones, right? And within these zones, right, he wanted all the documents associated within these zones. So literally by clicking any of those zones, and you know, uh, in this example that blue box is selected, all the documents within that zone come up and then you can query and search for exactly what documents you need. So again, not having to utilize the 3D. You know, the same data is available if you want to look at the interface via a 2D platform. And in my previous presentation, I had a little bit more time, but you know, some of the visual things that we were able to show was the ability to, uh, one of the most powerful aspects of VDC is the ability to visually communicate, right? So you know, we started to experiment in using AR media where literally um, we can take a detail, in this example, it's a wall detail. By hovering a uh, iPad over it, uh, this brings it to life. So instead of looking at a 2D, piece of paper by hovering the iPad over it, you get a 3D perspective of this exact um, um, interface. 
Disney's using this, I think, to, um, if you hover, I think I saw in Disney, uh, like over Mickey Mouse, it plays a video, like a hologram of Mickey Mouse talking to you. So a very similar concept, but again, in the construction industry, we're trying to figure out how we apply it to what we do. Uh, this simple concept of just bringing this 3D wall detail to life, um, very powerful, right? Everyone in the field can actually see what they need to build. And then uh, some of you may be familiar with this, um, others may not, but uh, you know, this whole Oculus Rift, obviously the, um, the gaming industry really started to drive this, right? And uh, as a construction company, we're starting to look to see how we could possibly leverage this technology. As we're looking at this technology, it's starting to make sense. I mean, visually, we can put our owners into their space before it's even been built, right? If you're a judge and you want to sit in your judge's chamber prior to even any mock-ups being built, you can do that, right? Uh, with the Oculus Rift and that Samsung VR, it really gives you that ability to kind of put someone in that virtual space to see the design, right, to see things in motion. So uh, that's something that's very intriguing us. And the evolution of this is, I'm not sure if you've seen the HoloLens program by Microsoft, but uh, um, truly that's something that we're starting to look at and starting to figure out how it works for um, you know, ourselves as well as our clients. Here's just a quick video on um, this integration that uh, Microsoft is doing with Trimble currently. Architects are dealing with shapes and spaces and light, and they dream in 3D. And then you need to translate this design into a set of 2D documents. Holands present a completely new paradigm. Triple provides design solutions for architects and structure engineers. Anything that involves getting dirty is our business. Literally hundreds of enterprises can be represented on a job site. Today, the best way those companies have to interact with each other is uh, paper, paper drawings. But people aren't good at visualizing 3D. Microsoft HoloLens is a head-mounted, self-contained computer that lets you see holograms in the real world. You get the physical model as a, as a focus point for the team to collaborate around. And you get the hologram with the flexibility, with the ability to run quick iterations. You see how we've brought in the courtyard that you suggested? <coughs> you see that mouse? go off the screen and into holographic space, and you're then interacting with the hologram, with the mouse. The thing that we can do for architects is really give them much higher confidence around decision making. And one way we can do that is we can allow them to literally immerse themselves in the scene of their building and see street side, how the building's gonna look. Visualizing design data in the context of a real environment is a much better way to make sure the design is implemented correctly on site. Microsoft HoloLens allows you to collaborate with somebody regardless of distance, like they were there. Hello there. Hey Igor, where they're trying to put this door, there's a beam behind here. I'm looking at this beam, we're interacting with it about a problem that we can see and being able to solve that problem with all the data that we need in front of us in real time. When I'm talking about enterprise construction, I always compare it to people trying to make music together. Each one of them is contributing to the harmony, but they all should be completely synced. My gray hair says I've been doing this for a while. I've seen a lot of these uh, new things come and go. And I expect in five years, we'll all be interacting with the world with this kind of technology. Okay, I think that's... Uh wraps up my quick presentation. <laughs> Sorry I ran through so quickly. <laughs> <laughs>